battle passes, microtransactions, predatory monetization practices that have been plaguing many of our favorite video games. Gamers have been complaining about this since a certain horse reared its ugly head back in 2006. Ever since then, game design has started shifting from creating the best game to creating the most profitable storefront possible. An ethical company would stay far away from these sorts of practices. So naturally, Wizards of the Coast decided to embrace these practices wholeheartedly. After Hasbro reported a 15% decrease in the third quarter, when compared to the year prior, the CEO of Wizards of the Coast decided to play the hero, reportedly saying the D&D brand is under-monetized. We want to unlock the type of recurrent spending we see in video games. D&D has been under an open game license for most of the time it's been around. But now, Wizards of the Coast is looking to change that in an attempt to line their pockets with more of your money. The executives would like you to believe this is only going to affect larger creators, but many of the creators this is aimed at already have deals in place that make Wizards millions in profit. It became crystal clear what their main goal was when the OGL 1.1 was leaked. I will link the full leak below, but here are the highlights and the main things you should be concerned with. Have you created a homebrew campaign setting? Mine. Maybe a custom class? Or maybe Mine. a few original monsters? Well, the updated OGL will make it so that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro will own all of it regardless if you had any intention of selling it or not. Wizards states this is to protect them in case they make something similar, but based on their previous statement and actions, it became obvious that this could be the first step on a slippery slope to monetizing content they did not create, all without the permission of the original creator and all without any sort of compensation. The next major concern is about the royalty schedule that was included. Any creator who sells D&D related materials with a commercial license and makes more than 750 k would be required to pay royalties to Wizards of the Coast. This seems like a reasonable request at first, but it is worded very carefully. Creators will be required to enter into an agreement with Wizards of the Coast in order to sell any related products. Failing to do so will open you up to copyright claims, even if the content you created was made available for free. Under these new policies, anyone selling D&D related products, whether it be larger creators like Critical Role or the little guy who just takes $1 donations for their work, will all be required to report any revenue gained from these products to Wizards of the Coast. This is a huge invasion of privacy, but that should be the least of your worries here. The main concern here that compounds all the issues I have outlined earlier is a clause snuck in at the end. Wizards of the Coast reserves the right to completely change this agreement at any time for any reason. All they have to do is give you 30 days notice. So what's to stop Wizards of the Coast from changing the 750k threshold down to say 1000 and swooping in to steal all the creators work 30 days later? Trust? Yes. Swooping is bad. What Wizards of the Coast fails to realize is that they have done absolutely nothing to gain our trust. On the contrary, they have been repeatedly making the most greedy and anti-consumer choices available to them. Let's take a look at their other massive property, Magic the Gathering. In 2019, Wizards of the Coast released a super limited reprint of previous beloved cards with alternate art. Many fans, including myself, flocked to buy these cards. Like I said before, this was supposed to be a super limited run. However, when Wizards of the Coast realized how profitable this was, they decided to do it again. And again. Currently, they have done over 150 of these super limited reprints, but the massive success of this wasn't enough, so they decided to further pad their profits by reducing the quality of the cards, all the while continuously increasing the price of each secret layer drop. Since this drop in quality, many people have begun reporting issues with curling, especially when it comes to foil cards. But this isn't even half the story. All of these reprints have had massive repercussions on the secondary market. Cards that people have been collecting for decades have started losing value at an alarming rate, causing many collectors to lose thousands in value in their collection. This has even impacted the majority of formats in the game. The only format of Magic the Gathering that hasn't been directly impacted by these poor business practices is Standard. And this is only because Standard is a format that focuses only on the most recent sets released. So reprints are not legal in this format unless it was also reprinted in one of the most recent sets. But Standard isn't the most common format of this game. That privilege goes to Commander. A completely fan-made format, by the way. Commander has been highly affected by all these reprints. Cards that were once considered rare are now found in every deck, completely ruining the balance of the game. Wizards of the Coast has a long history of milking a property for all it's worth with zero regard to how it affects the game. 
The community is 100% the reason why D&D has become as big as it is, but the community is viewed as nothing more than walking wallets to Wizards of the Coast. There have been multiple leaks from people that currently work for Wizards of the Coast who gave us an inside look at what the executives think of the very community that built their brand. One leak stated that since the backlash of the OGL 1.1 leak, the executives have been getting upset that people have been canceling their D&D Beyond subscriptions in droves, commenting that the customers are getting in the way of their money. Wizards of the Coast feel entitled to your hard-earned money because to them, it's not yours, it's theirs. It's my money and I need it now! Their number one priority is figuring out ways to separate you from your money and the way the OGL 1.1 is worded makes it extremely easy for them to do just that. A few days ago, a live stream that was believed to be the announcement of the OGL 1.1 was cut almost immediately due to the massive number of negative comments that started the second Wizards of the Coast went live. Wizards of the Coast then released an official statement that was just filled to the brim with bullshit that they think we're stupid enough to believe. So let's get into that. I will be reading the post in its entirety with my own response to each section, but I will also link it below. When we first conceived of revising the OGL, it was with three major goals in mind. First, we wanted the ability to prevent the use of D&D content from being included in hateful and discriminatory products. Second, we wanted to address those attempting to use D&D in Web3 blockchain games and NFTs by making clear that OGL content is limited to tabletop role-playing content like campaigns, modules, and supplements. And third, we wanted to ensure that the OGL is for the content creator, the home brewer, the aspiring designer, our players, and the community, not major corporations to use for their own commercial and promotional purposes. This is unlikely. If the clause you added at the end wasn't there, people may have believed you, but the addition of this clause lends all the credence of Russia saying they're just running drills on the Ukrainian border. Driving these goals were two simple principles. One, our job is to be good stewards of the game, and two, the OGL exists for the benefit of the fans. Nothing about those principles have wavered for a second. Good stewards do not pervert their charge for profit. What in the OGL 1.1 was meant to benefit the fans? Was it the part where you deauthorized the previous OGL jeopardizing fan-made content? Or maybe it's the ability to completely modify it at any time. If your goal was to benefit the fans, you would have included language that would have protected previous creations that were made under the original OGL. That was why the early drafts of the new OGL included the provisions they did. That draft language was provided to content creators and publishers so their feedback could be considered before anything was finalized. Drafts do not include contracts. Contracts were sent to Kickstarter along with this so-called draft with an expectation that they would sign. This statement is blatantly false. In addition to language allowing us to address discriminatory and hateful conduct and clarifying what types of products the OGL covers, our drafts included royalty language designed to apply to large corporations attempting to use OGL content. It was never our intent to impact the vast majority of our community. However, it's clear from the reaction that we rolled a one. It has become clear that it is no longer possible to fully achieve all three goals while still staying true to our principles. Yes, you did include royalty language designed to apply to large corporations, but you are also requiring anyone who creates content under the new OGL 1.1 to report any profits made directly to you. This in combination with the fuck you I do what I want clause you attempted to sneak in puts you in a prime position to steal or shut down any product that you want with zero recourse. And yes, you rolled a one. You know what happens when you roll a one? No, I doubt the people making these decisions even know how to play the game. Allow me to educate you. If you roll a one, you fail. You don't get to try again. That's called having advantage. And I would argue that even if you had advantage, you wasted your first roll on the botch system that was D&D 4.0. The next OGL will contain provisions that allow us to protect and cultivate the inclusive environment we are trying to build and specify that it covers only content for TTRPGs, tabletop RPGs. That means that other expressions such as educational and charitable campaigns, live streams, cosplay, VTT uses, etc. will remain unaffected by any OGL update. Content already released under 1.0a will also remain unaffected. What it will not include 
is any royalty structure. It will not include the license back provisions that some people were afraid was a means for us to steal work. That thought never crossed our minds. Under any new OGL, you will own the content you create. We won't. Any language we put down will be crystal clear and unequivocal on that point. The license back language was intended to protect us and our partners from creators who incorrectly allege that we steal their work simply because of coincidental similarities. As we continue to invest in the game that we love and move forward with partnerships in film, television, and digital games, that risk is simply too great to ignore. Okay. But what about the ability to modify this at any time? No matter what you say is included in the new OGL, it's pointless as long as you retain the ability to change things at the drop of the hat. Your silence on this particular point speaks volumes. The new OGL will contain provisions to address that risk, but we will do it without a license back and without suggesting we have rights to the content you create. Your ideas and imagination are what makes this game special, and that belongs to you. It's pretty dystopian that a major corporation needs to tell me that my imagination belongs to me. A couple of last thoughts. First, we won't be able to release the new OGL today because we need to make sure we get it right, but it is coming. Second, you're going to hear a lot of people say that they won and we lost because making your voices heard forced us to change our plans. Those people will only be half right. They won and so did we. Our plan was always to solicit the input of our community before any update to the OGL. The drafts you've seen were attempting to do just that. We want to always delight fans and create experiences together that everyone loves. We realized we did not do that this time and we were sorry for that. Our goal was to get exactly the type of feedback on which provisions worked and which did not, which we ultimately got from you. Any change this major could only have been done if we were willing to take feedback, no matter how it was provided. So we are. Thank you for caring enough to let us know what works and what doesn't work, what you need and what scares you. Without knowing that, we can't do our part to make the new OGL match our principles. Finally, we'd appreciate the chance to make this right. We love D&D's devoted players and the creators who take time on so many incredible adventures. We won't let you down. Of all the tone-deaf, passive-aggressive bullshit responses you could have gone with, you went with sorry not sorry? Then you turn around and ask us to give you a chance to make it right? You blatantly stated that the new OGL is coming despite the fact that the fans have told you we do not want this, period. D&D at its core is a framework that allows us to further flesh it out with our own imaginations. You do not get to monetize our own imaginations. You forget that it is the fans that made this game what it is. We do not need your so-called protection and we do not need you. After the original leak of the OGL 1.1, the same source leaked what the digital game VP has planned for the future of D&D Beyond. This includes each player paying $30 a month at the highest tier, which includes content drops. The deauthorization of the OGL 1.0a, banning homebrew in base tiers, and stripped down gameplay for AI DMs. Do these monetization practices ring any bells? It's a fucking battle pass. I, for one, do not want to have to start paying battle passes for games that take place primarily in my own mind. This is setting a dangerous precedent that you can be sure other corporations will take advantage of if we do not put an end to this now. Wizards of the Coast is hoping to lay low at the Winchester until this whole thing blows over. We need to make our voices heard by hitting them in the one thing Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast have made abundantly clear they care about the bottom line. If you are watching this video and still have a D&D Beyond account, I want to urge you to join the over 40,000 of other players that have joined together making their voices heard by canceling their accounts. In the description, I will be including links to D&D Beyond alternatives, alternatives created by actual players like you and me who are not looking to exploit you. I will also be including all of my sources as well as a couple other videos I highly suggest you watch. Let's make it clear that this type of exploitation has no place in our community. A quick update, after I finished recording this video there is an update from the executive producer on D&D. I'll link that in the description below, but I'll give you the highlights here. On or before Friday the 20th, they will be sharing the new proposed OGL document to be reviewed by the community. It will also include a survey that allows you to provide any feedback you may have on it. They also promise that the following issues will be resolved in the next draft. 
Your video content will be protected. This includes commentator, streamer, podcaster, live play, or the video creators on platforms like YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. It will not affect the ability to sell minis, novels, apparel, dice, or any other items related to your creation, characters, or worlds. There will be no royalty or financial reporting required, and you will continue to own your content with no license back requirements. It does seem like the outrage has had an effect, but as I said before, none of this really means anything if they reserve the right to make changes to this whenever. It is concerning that the latest response completely skipped over this for a second time, and this also doesn't address the desire to monetize D&D in a similar fashion to video games. But I guess we won't have to wait long to see what their next move is, but I remain cautious. That's all I have for you today, so until next time, game responsibly.